song is stuck in my head. I'm not gonna sing it out loud. Probably for the best. It is for the best. Okay, looks like we're live on Facebook and on YouTube. Are we? I see now us. Now I see. Now I see. Do you? Now I. Donna Bale, welcome. Hey guys, welcome. My name is Marina. I'm the founder of Creatively, and I'm joined here by my husband, Alex. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, hello, hello. How's, how's everyone doing this fine evening? So tonight, guys, we are painting You Autumn Know. That's right. I, I just couldn't. I, 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 I'm not a willing participant. So we'll give you about 10 minutes or so to set up. So we'll go through the supplies in a second and you could take this time to grab your drinks, um, finish your setup and we'll get started in a bit. Let us know where you're from. Let us know. So first of all, say hi in the chat. Let us know where you're from. Let us know if you're a first time painter. Let us know what you're drinking tonight. First time joining us. First time joining us. That's a lot of things we just gave them. Listen, you know, and now they get a break to soak it all in. <laughs> if you guys are just joining, welcome, welcome. We're seeing someone from Puerto Rico, from Vermont, from Florida, That's Savannah, Idaho, Buffalo. California. West Coast. Ooh, ooh. Is anyone from yeah. Queens, New York? We're streaming Hello. from Queens, New York. Tejas. There's a few people from Brooklyn, though. We'll take it. Are there? Yeah. Jana Bale. Hello, Nelda. Got New Jersey in the house. Yeah, we got Ontario. Oh, the Great White North has joined. I love it. <laughs> Welcome, guys. So let me go through our supplies. You ready, Alex? I was born ready. Okay, let's do this. So we are going to be using 12 by 12 canvas. 12 by 12 canvas. We Check. have our palette paper, shiny side up. Shiny side up, very important. Check. I don't know if it's that important. I just like to say it. Well, that we're going to say it's important. So we have six colors of paint. They're all kind of blending into each other, but that's okay. So we have phthalo blue, phthalo blue, white, yellow, red, black, and ready for this? Raw sienna. Easily my new favorite. Easily it's definitely my, my, new, my new, well, it's Fan. not my new favorite, but it's my favorite fall color. Fan. Pretty fantastic. fantastic. Well, I'm just, the name itself, I, I'm a fan. So we also have our step-by-step -step instructions and sample postcard. Check and check and conveniently pinned. So we conveniently pinned it for you guys at the top of this chat. So if you want to follow along with the step-by-step -step instructions and have your high resolution reference piece, um, you could purchase it on our website and you'll get a digital copy emailed to you right away, which is pretty awesome, I think. Absolutely. And then we also have our cup with water. Water cup clearly labeled as water. As paint, paint Pro water, tip. not just water, paint water. Pro tip. We have, so I'll probably be using two brushes today, but I have an extra one just in case. Oh, one in the holster. So we have a size 16 flathead brush. Size 16 flathead. And then yeah. we have a size four round brush. Round four, check. And then, so we actually gave a bonus brush to our subscribers last month, I think. Um, so this is a size zero zero, so I may or may not be using it, I'm not sure yet. But if you have one from last time, you're more than welcome to use it because we're about to get a little bit detailed up in here. Uh -huh. Oh, the, the roulette double zero. 
That's not a really that. intimidating. We're going to get very detailed here. It's not, it's not going to be scary. Don't worry. And then, oh, so we have some bonus optional items that I'm probably going to be using, but it's totally optional. So we have a ruler. Ooh, that was loud. Wow. So, a serious ruler. So this is a pretty serious ruler, but you could use any straight edge. You don't even need to use a ruler or you could just wing it if you're really good at making straight lines. So this is for- Wouldn't you say your box may be a good straight oh, line? Oh, that's a good one. So if you guys have the box, you could probably use one of the sides for a straight line, that's, that's great. So this is gonna be used for the, um, the lights to make the straight lines. Good idea, I love it. And then we also have some Q-tips. So I have about five here, yes. Is the regular old home variety yes, Q-tips? Q-tips that you have at home, this is totally optional, so you don't need to use them, but we might get a little crazy later. We encourage creativity. Yes. And then I think that's it, but last but not least, we have our adult beverage. Adult beverage. So, Alex, I think you made mine tonight. As most times. As every the, time. The bartender behind the scenes. Um, uh, yes. A lovely tequila soda. Tequila soda and lime. And lime. Okay, I'll take it. It's fresh. Okay, so we have a few more people joining. Welcome, guys. So, I do want to let you guys know. I'm not sure yet, but maybe. We may have a giveaway later tonight. So the way that you enter the giveaway is by commenting in the chat. So the more you comment, the more chances you have of winning the giveaway because we are gonna select, well, if we do the giveaway, we don't know yet. Teaser. Teaser. Bio. But if we do the giveaway, we're gonna select a random person from the chat. So the more you comment, the more chances you have of winning so more just more just entries to the raffle hey you know exactly and if you hit thumbs up on this feed you might get a few bonus entries i don't know just saying it doesn't hurt it does not definitely does it, not it, it at least doesn't hurt you know who doesn't like free things <laughs> so if you guys are almost ready to go um take a second to give us a thumbs up on this feed and also follow us on facebook and instagram so we actually have our um instagram and facebook name at the bottom of the screen it's creatively box so okay. give us a follow if you can it would mean a lot just so we can see their wonderful work yeah, after later. the afterwards okay so we have about a minute or so to go. Are you ready? Is that like a joke? I feel I'm like so the time ready. passed by so quickly. I'm like so ready. <laughs> oh, Nelda's here. Welcome, Nelda. I'm glad that you're enjoying the apron. Okay, let me raise this a little here so you guys can see the sample piece. All right, are there any first time painters here, Alex? Did you see? I saw a couple that said first time with first us. First time with us, okay. Oh, let me, okay. However, I have not seen, maybe, ladies and gentlemen, please correct me if I'm wrong, if it's anyone first time painting. If they're first time with us, I'll take it. But if you guys are first time painter, Definitely don't be intimidated by this. This is super easy and I'm excited for you to try it with us. And just know it comes together in the it, end. Th so this one actually does come together in the end. Hashtag art. All right, Alex, I think it's 8-11. We need to be super punctual this. here. Well, you know, you, as you told me right before, just... One minute later for a little fashionably late, just to let them know. A little fashionably late. All right, guys, so we are going to take our large brush. 
in your right hand and please hold it up and repeat after me. <clears throat> I promise. I promise. To relax and have fun. To relax and have fun. To not judge my painting. To not judge my painting. Or the painting of others. Or the painting of others. And to be fearless. And to be fearless. Wow, that was very enthusiastic. I like Let's it. Let's do it. Game time. <laughs> so I'm going to try to lift this up a bit so you can see what I'm mixing. So I hope you guys said the pledge with us because it really just calms you down a bit and um, helps you enjoy the process. So we're going to take our large brush and I'm going to dip it in the water. Put this here for a second so you could see it. And I'm going to make a very light blue color. So I'm just going to take a lot of white and just a little bit of my blue and mix it together to get a very light blue color. Is this the, the phthalo, phthalo blue? blue. Isn't oh, that amazing? You better it's believe like it. the most beautiful sky blue color once you mix it with white. Okay, so then I'm going to start from the top and I'm just going to go in horizontal strokes all the way across. And I'm going to do this pretty much till about halfway down my canvas. So I'm just going to cover my entire half of the canvas. I don't know why I just said entire, but <laughs> my entire half of the canvas with this light blue. And I'm just going to keep going in horizontal strokes. But and answered my question. I You're did. So on top of it, yeah. what was the question? I was going to ask: Should we go consistently side to side, up and down? Of course, I Does answered your question. I'm saying you're so on it right now. So I do want to mention that as we're going further down the canvas, we're going to make the color more light. So we're going to make it lighter and lighter blue as we keep going down. So I'm just going to keep adding more and more white to it. So it's going to be kind of the slow fade into white. Okay. And by the halfway point, it's white? So to speak? Sort of, yeah. So it kind of fades into your original canvas. Love it. And you could dip your brush into water a little bit and it'll help your paint spread on your canvas. So it was probably not a good idea to have this white pumpkin here because it's already covered in paint. <laughs> Rookie mistake. And Alex, I don't think I mentioned this, but we're going to be revealing our next month's painting in a little bit. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see it. We actually posted it earlier this morning. Right now, teaser. But we'll show it to you again a little bit later tonight. I'm excited. And it's super cool because we had our subscribers and follower followers vote on the theme of November's painting, which was really cool because we know that you guys wanted to paint this. So it's super fun to please see. people. Was asked, have you been painting a long time? I've been painting a long time. I mean, I've been drawing since I could hold up a pencil, but painting, I think I started in high school, which was a very long time ago. <laughs>
<laughs> so this is getting lighter and lighter as I'm going down my canvas. I'm just adding more and more white to my color. And I'm actually gonna bring this color maybe a, a little bit lower down than halfway and kind of just blend it into the white canvas. Love a good light blue. Sets like a good calming mood. It does. You know, Alex, I keep on forgetting to show the easel. Always. As a, Always. As a box. Why do I keep it's on like forgetting that? It's like you don't want to share this wealth of knowledge. <laughs> so I'm going to show you guys. So if you order from our website. So first of all, if you guys have never heard of us, Creatively is essentially a paint party in a box. So our goal is to bring people together through creativity. And we have these really awesome boxes that are filled with all the supplies you need to create this painting um, or any painting that's on our website. Um, so it's super easy to get everything that you need to create this and it's shipped right to your door. So it comes in this fancy little box. You guys in a second. So it comes in this fancy bright pink slash red slash coral box. I don't know what the color really. Um, but this box is also an easel. So if you fold the lid back, you could tape. I don't know if you guys can see playing, but <laughs> So you could tape the, the sides here. So you put a piece of tape. Oh, where's the camera? Oh, where's the camera? There it is. Okay, so you put a piece of tape here and then you put a piece of tape on the other side and it works as an easel. And then you just put it down on your table and it's super easy to paint on it. So right now I'm painting flat just so you could see it, but I pretty much always use an easel to paint. And it's a great way to actually see what you're painting and to step back and see it from, from a distance as well. Cool, let's keep going. Ready, Alex? Oh. You know it. So I'm going to take my light blue color and I'm going to create a triangle um, on the bottom part of my canvas. So I'm just going to do two lines that are going to connect in the middle. So it's super light. I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is just to mark where my road is going to be. And it doesn't need to be perfect at all because you're gonna paint right over it. So this is just for you to know, okay, this is gonna be my road. And it's kind of blending into the background, which is pretty cool. So then I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna create a light green color. Alex, should I t test you? Can you guys see my screen? Can you guys see my screen okay? We're good. So we are gonna make a light green color. So I'm gonna take some white, some blue and some yellow, and then mix them all together.
And you want your color to be pretty light for this. So I'm just gonna keep on adding a little bit more white to it. And then I'm gonna take this color and I'm gonna start from the middle of my canvas going up into this blue color. So it blends in together. So I'm actually gonna make it a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna add more white to it. So I want it to kind of blend into this light color. <laughs> The screen was frozen. Can you repeat what colors you used for the green? Yes. So for the green, it's blue, yellow, and white. Awesome. Thank you. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just taking this light green color and going right into my light blue color. You said you're going right over that halfway line? Yeah. So I'm starting on the halfway line, going up into my light blue. And if it's not blending for you guys, your color might be dry. So you could just take your brush and you could wash it. And then add some white. And then go over the two colors with white and they'll kind of blend together a bit. So now it's blending a bit better. So just remember, so this is acrylic paint. So with acrylic, you can't really mess up because if it dries, you could literally paint over it and cover it up completely. So any mistakes that you make, you could just paint over it. So you never have to worry about messing up. So if my color didn't blend well, I'm just adding white over it and just mixing these two together. So this way it looks pretty well blended. So then we're gonna go down our canvas all the way down and we're gonna make the green color a little bit darker as we go down. So we're just gonna use less white, so I'm just gonna be mixing yellow and blue and not a lot of white. I actually rarely use white in my green because I usually make it lighter by adding more yellow, but this time we're adding a little bit of white to it. It's so it's the, more uh, of artist professional in you, but for us, you know, amateur level, we go with the straight white color to help lighten it. So it doesn't need to be perfect at all. It could be pretty messy. So I'm just making this color darker. And I'm going right into my road. I, I don't really care where the line is. I'm kind of just going outside of the line a bit, which is totally fine. So it doesn't need to be perfectly up to your road line. Road line, is that a thing? I, I don't think will so. allow it. <laughs> <laughs> and again, guys, I'm going in horizontal strokes the whole time and just covering up the bottom part of my canvas and I'm leaving the road out. So I'm not painting over the road. I'm just doing the sides right now. And I wanna make my color a little bit darker on the bottom, so I'm just gonna not use any white. And I'm just gonna use yellow and blue. 
And I'm going to make it a bit darker here. Just take it up into the lighter green. Ah. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to start pretty light. So I'm just going to use a lot of white and less of the yellow and blue. And if you made your color too light or too dark, you could always change it up and just paint right over it. So you'll never know until you actually put the brush down onto your canvas. So you have to test it out and then you adjust. So if your color is too light, you could add um, more of the yellow and blue. And if your color is too dark, you could add more white. And just keep playing around and don't worry about adding the wrong color because you could always paint right over it. Like one of those good life lessons. You never know until you, you put the paintbrush the... onto the canvas. Exactly. You just got to dive in. Love it. And just the more that you go back and forth with your brush, the more it blends into the other color. So you want just a gradual progression of it fading into a lighter color. And I'm just going up onto the edge of the road and kind of going right into it. So it's, it's pretty messy on my end. No holes barred. Hmm? No hole barred, you gotta go. You gotta... So I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to my color to make it darker. So this is gonna be a darker green. And then I'm gonna start from the bottom of my canvas and just take this color up a bit. And your canvas is pretty much covered completely, so it almost looks finished, right? I mean, I see art. So I basically. <laughs> I feel like right? you could just leave it and it'll be. A it will be a good paint. So you could make it even darker on the bottom just by adding more blue to your color. If you notice, I'm actually not adding any black to make it darker. I'm just adding blue and it makes it a darker green. Who would have thought? I don't know. The wonders and mystery. And sometimes. Of art. So let's say, guys, it looks a bit stripy over here. So I want it to blend a little bit more. So I could go into this with a lighter uh, green color. So I could just mix my yellow and blue and then add a little bit of white to it to get this original color. And I'll just go back into it and you'll see that it's gonna just blend. Maybe I need to go a little bit lighter even. Even lighter. Yeah, so then you see I covered up this line that I had that was very abrupt with this lighter color. So just keep playing around until it looks pretty gradual going down, but it still looks pretty messy, um, at least on my end, and that's totally okay.
Because at the end of the day, you're painting grass and grass is all bumpy and different lengths and different textures. So it's not going to look all smooth. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So this scene is kind of a foggy fall scene, right? Because the green, yeah, because the green is blending right into the, into the blue. And it's all flowing into, the sky is flowing into the I see, I see the it earth. as rainy. Does, does rainy necessarily mean foggy? No. I, I riddle you this. It does not, but for this painting, it's both rainy and foggy. All right, guys, so we are going to get into painting the road. You ready for this? It's going to be a completely new color. New color. So Carrie's asking how to make brown. I'm going to ask Alex this. No way. Not a chance. Zero. Zero chances. Why? Because we said that there was no quizzes. However, I will say that I think there's some blue and red involved. Okay. Yes. Maybe well, maybe blue and red yellow. makes purple. And then, then yellow. Yeah. So, so there's a bunch of ways to make... Did I just get paint all over me? I don't know. There's, <laughs> there's a bunch of ways to make brown. So it's... Uh, Blue, yellow, and red is the way that I like to mix brown. Um, so you have to get the right proportions because otherwise it turns into a completely different color. So you really have to play around for a while until you get that brown color. And it's actually really fun. We've done that in some of our other paintings. Um, and then you could also use complementary colors. So like orange, Don't you? orange and blue and red and green, and that could make brown. So definitely multiple ways. But first you'd have to make the green to then add the yeah. red to. Or if you have a premixed green, then it's easier. I see. Yeah. But Fair it's enough. a little, that's like the most tricky color to make. Brown? Yeah. I think. All right, guys, so we are going to make purple, Alex. You do, I just told you. Oh, blue and red. Blue You're red. such a pro at this. Okay, so uh, we are going to mix some blue and some red. So because I'm using phthalo blue, this is super dark. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to my red and blue. I'm going to make a medium purple color. So just keep mixing until you like the color. So yours could be totally different from mine. And actually, you don't have to make this road purple like mine. You could make it brown. You can make it pink. You can make it whatever color you want. So definitely uh, feel free to go rogue at any time and just do your own thing and break any of the rules that I'm setting here. Hashtag creativity. Wait a minute. Wow. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to start painting in my road with this purple color. So I also want it to fade into the distance, so I'm going to use a lighter purple for the top of it. So I could just add a little bit of white to my purple and just make it fade. So it's getting really thin at the top and then wider as I go down.
So if you want to make it fade even more, you could actually just wash your brush and go over it a bit with your light green color. So I'm going to show you because I kind of wanted to fade a little bit more into the distance because it's very foggy out. Deep fade. So I'm going to just wash my brush completely and I'm going to go into my premixed green color. So actually, I don't I don't have a lot in here, so I'm just going to make some more. I'm just adding white and then a little bit of yellow and a little bit of blue. To get this green color and maybe a little bit more white. And then you could go right into here and just kind of cover up. Oops, kind of cover up some of this road. So it's just fading a bit. Sometimes you have to play around to get the right color. I think I faded it out a little too much. So now I could go back in with the purple and bring back some of this road. So it, you never have to worry about making mistakes because right now I added too much green. So now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add in the purple again. Too much fade. Too much fade. Is, there, is that a thing? Uh, is it even possible? I don't know. So I'm adding back this light purple color in here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit more highlights and a little bit more shadows to this road. So I could continue going with the light purple and just add a few strokes of this light purple. Just in random places. So I'm kind of adding a few random lines of this light purple just to give this road a bit more interest. And then I'm going to go in with a darker purple. So I'm just using less white. And I'm going to add some of this darker purple onto the bottom of my road. It could even be darker. So I'm just adding some shadows and then I'm just adding some highlights. So most of the shadows are going to be at the bottom of this road. Your mic's not on. Is it on now? Yeah. I would never think as purple of like being in uh, a road color. But when you see it, especially in this way, like, well, yeah, that, you know, it's a nice rainy road right there. So I, you're going to be shocked because we're going to be using purple for the trees. Don't, well. you, don't you lie to me. <laughs> don't you lie to me. So again, guys, if you added uh, too much of the shadows, you could always go back in with the lighter purple and just add more of the highlights back in.
How's everyone doing? I feel like everyone's concentrating so much. I was excited to see you next week. Are you? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. You know, potentially the, uh, the GA. <laughs> Shh, don't tell them. All right, kind of digging this a bit. So I love how it fades into the distance and it really gives it a lot of depth. Agreed. So guys, before I go on to the next step, I want to remind you, and for those of you who joined later, so we might have a giveaway later tonight. And the way that you enter the giveaway is by commenting in the chat. So we're gonna pick a random person from this chat box um, who's gonna get our giveaway. And the more you comment, the more chances you have of winning. So oh, yeah. comment away. But also, I want you to focus on your painting as well. So you kind of have to multitask here. <laughs> uh, demanding practice on both the excitement and your concentration all right alex so the next if you even ask me how to make a color no i'm walking out <laughs> so the next step we're gonna get to the street lights hi yo so i'm gonna use my thin brush double zeros um so i think i want to use my double zeros but you could also use a size four or whatever small brush you have so i'm gonna use a handy ruler here, here so this go. is totally straight optional so if you're like me and you can't really make straight lines um i would recommend to use uh straight edge so if you have a ruler you could use the box you could use maybe a piece of paper and just make sure that your paint is pretty dry on your canvas for this step so my paint is is pretty dry so i feel confident in using this ruler so i'm just gonna use it for reference so you don't have to like put the entire ruler on your canvas but you, you could maybe put just the edge of it if you want to so i'm gonna start with my street light that's the closest to me. So it's gonna be further down the canvas. So I'm gonna start it about here. And it's gonna be the tallest one. So depending on where you want the street light to end, I'm probably gonna do it about here or so. I don't know if you guys saw those marks. So this is a bit intimidating because we're putting a very dark color on a very light color. But, but, it's okay. but it's okay. We're doing this together. You got this. It's only a, it's only a straight line. So I'm just going to draw it all the way down. Okay. <laughs> it's true. Whew. We got this. We're doing it together. All right. I feel like a surgeon. <laughs> Slowly but sometimes, surely. So sometimes you, you could rest your elbow onto the table to keep your hands to steady. Stabilize. Yeah. So it. I'm just going to make this a little bit thicker. So this pole is going to be thicker at the bottom and it's going to thin out a bit at the top. Almost like a tree. Almost, yeah. So we're going to be practicing a lot of lines, but trees are actually easier because they don't need to be straight they could all be crooked uh, a tree light would be fantastic so trees are not as intimidating so guys because this pole is the closest to you it's actually going to be thicker than the other ones so you want to make this one kind of um thick so i'm gonna make it a little bit thicker and you can continue using your ruler if you want, but I'm, I'm kind of just going to wing it. Did you use black for that? Yeah, so I'm using black. 
Um, but for the next one, I'm gonna lighten them up as we go further into the distance, just like we have for the grass, where it's lighter at the top and then darker as you go down the canvas. So the, the street lights that are gonna be further away are gonna be a lighter gray. I actually feel like using a thicker brush might be better. And if you guys are intimidated to use such a dark color on your canvas, you could always uh, make it lighter at first. So you could use a light blue to make the lines and then you could color it in with black. So that way you're kind of testing it out and not as intimidated, but remember you pledge to be fearless. Remember that? Remember that, it. Alex? Oh, I remember. You gotta go, just go you for it. You gotta go for it. No ifs, ands. Gotta go for it. I actually wanted to switch my brush and then I forgot. So I'm just making it a little bit thicker. And I'm leading my elbow on the table just to steady my hand a bit. So if you guys make it too wide at the top, which there's no such thing because streetlights could be wider if you want them to be. So just make sure that the bottom is a little bit wider than your top. So if you made your top a bit wider, just make sure that the bottom is even wider than that. I've seen pretty wide street lights, right? Alex? I've seen some crazy street yeah. lights in my day. Yeah. There's a good variety. Exactly. So I'm okay with this one. And then guys, if you want, and this is, I probably wouldn't recommend this, but um, if you really don't like your street lights, you could wait for the paint to dry and then you could paint right over it. So you might need to do a couple of layers of your light green to cover it up just because it's a very dark color. So you could do that too. And then you could repaint it. So lots of options here. Either make them thick street lights or repaint it in a, in a few minutes. So then I'm gonna go on to my next one. So I'm gonna make this one a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna add some white to my black color to make it a gray. And I'm gonna start this one higher up and make it shorter. So if you guys imagine, so this might actually help if you take a ruler or any straight edge and you put it diagonally, this is where your lights are gonna end. So you just have to play around with the angle, it really depends. Um, so you could make your angle very steep so it'll look like the road is much longer or you can make it a little bit less steep and that way you know, so I'm starting my street light here and it's gonna end here, for example. So I'm just, I'm just winging this. I'm not even using a ruler. Oh, living life on the edge. I like it. And this is just me marking where it's going to be. So I'm going to make it a little bit uh, less crooked in a little bit. So this is my second one. And then I'm going to do my third one right now and I'm going to make it even lighter. So I'm still keeping the ruler here because it's helping me helping guide me where I'm going to end my street light. This is a little bit of a one point perspective. So I'm going to start this one around here. And then I'm going to end it. Wait, 
where the ruler So this is looking pretty good. So if you guys want to make your street lights a little bit longer, you could actually you could just take your ruler and play around with the angle. So if you shift your angle a bit, you could make this one longer and then this one longer. Maybe I'll do that. I like the way you had it have it. Which not and this one's gonna be a little longer. So these are my three lines. And then just a tip to make the shortest line the lightest one because it's further in the distance. And also, if you can, make it thinner than the other lines. So in this painting, we have three lampposts, but you can make a lot more if you're daring. So you could continue going up your road and adding more street lights in there if you want. A well lit path, if you will. Exactly. How's everyone doing? Don't forget to breathe. We're having fun. Ooh, this is the hardest part of the painting, I promise. So it all gets much easier. After the straight and, lines? Yeah, and all we did was add three straight lines. That's not too bad. That's not, you know, that crazy. Is it? I don't think so. I don't think so either. So I'm going to switch to my large brush. 16. 12. 16? 16. <laughs> so I am going to take some white. And I'm going to draw three circles. So above the lines. So it's not going to be perfect. My first circle. And then keep in mind, as you're going further into the distance, the circles are going to be slightly smaller. So this one's going to be a bit smaller. Maybe I'll switch over to my small brush. This one's going to be even smaller. Do you feel extra detailed? I might switch to my small brush. I'm going to switch to my number four. And I'm just going to go in here and this is going to be pretty thick paint. So I want it to look very white here. I'm just coloring in the circle and you guys could change the shape of it. So you can make it bigger, you can make it you know, a square. Can you have lights that are square? I think so. You can make it an oval if you want. Hey, can lights be square? Yeah, can this be like a square like, uh, like a street light? Yeah, yeah you know, I think so. Square, I mean, you know, rectangle, prisms. So I'm just coloring these in and I'm making my paint pretty thick. So that way you could really see the white.
All right, we got this. Hardest part is out of the way. Here we go. Look at those. Now we got street lanterns. Okay, so I'm going to wash my brush. Actually, I don't think I needed to wash it, but. So then I'm going to make a light yellow color. So I'm going to use, actually, maybe we'll just use yellow without adding white to it. So I'm just going to use yellow and I'm going to go around these street lights in little short round strokes. And you could go right into the white so it kind of blends a bit. So this is, this is kind of Van Gogh-esque because you're adding these short little round strokes around here and you're not really blending them, you're just kind of leaving them. So I'm just going around the street light and some of my strokes are looking a bit green because the yellow is blending into the blue color. So you can make the paint a bit thicker and then the yellow is going to show through. Thicker on the yellow, I see. What do you mean? So I'm just going around these light bulbs. So we usually ask you guys to share what you've created at the end to post it on either Instagram or Facebook and tag us. So we have our hashtag at the bottom, or you could just, um, is it called at us? Mention us? Ads? Like the at creatively box? Ads? Tag? Tag? I guess. Tag us. Is that what the, is that what feel... the people are saying? At us? At at us. Come at us, bro. I don't know. I, I think that's a thing. But um, so you could either use our hashtag or you could do at creatively box so that way we see it and then we could share it on our social page. And also, we just love looking at what you guys we create. We love to see it. What, what the... And it's amazing how everyone's look so different. Right, like how everyone received the instruction and put their art together. It's like our favorite part. Exactly. How's everyone doing? Are you ready to move on? Do you need a break to refill your drink? That's a good question. I don't know. If, do I? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys need a minute or two to refill your drinks, we are going to move on to the trees in a little bit. So I think before we do that, I am going to show you our November box. Alex, you ready for this? Is it too oh soon? My oh my God. I've been waiting for this. Wow. Slow. Just, just the, the quick <laughs> reveal the Hey, we're doing this. Yes. Too soon? Okay. okay. So I'm going to show you guys our November box. So this one, we're going to have a live tutorial on the first Tuesday of November, which I'm actually not sure of the date yet. Let's take a quick gander. I think it's the seventh, but I might be making that up. Wow, really? I don't know. First Tuesday? The first Tuesday of November. Is the, is the second. Is the second. 
Second. Second. Okay, the second. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to be doing another fall painting. So this one is called Pumpkin Pickup. Alex actually named this one. So this one, you guys actually voted on the theme, which was a uh, harvest truck. And I'm super excited to paint this truck with you. This one is actually super easy because we have a traceable for you. So all you do is you use the traceable and then we're gonna paint it. So we're gonna get to the fun part right away by using this traceable. Um, so this one is super fall, really fun. And I love the turquoise color. That's my favorite color. So definitely check it out. It's on our website, creativelybox.com. It's called Pumpkin Pickup. And this is part of our November box. I love this one. So we are gonna post our next event soon. Get ready, folks. Oh, and then I'm gonna show you guys one of our all-time favorite paintings, also fall. So this one is called Fallen Birches. We actually did this last October. This is one of my favorite paintings. Um, it's really fun to do this birch texture. Um, so this one is up on our website as well. It's called Fallen Birches and you could purchase the box for it and it comes with step-by-step -step instructions, link to the video tutorial, all the supplies you need, all the colors and it ships right to your door. And it also makes an awesome gift for any creative person time. in your fa family. And it's and about fall. to be the fall. It's going to look What so do you mean good. about to be the fall? It's already fall. Well, you know, like it, it's about to be full on changing of the colors and such. Yeah. And birches are my favorite too. So. so both are super fun. Check them out. And I think we're ready. You ready, Alex? Oh, I'm ready. Okay, we're gonna use our small brush for this. I'm gonna make sure to wash it. And we're gonna make, uh, oh, someone has been on our birches painting last year, Margarita, welcome back. Yeah, the birches one was one of my favorites. It was super fun. So we are gonna make a light purple color. So I'm gonna do white, blue and red, and you could actually just mix into your existing color already. I don't know why I'm mixing it here, but you could just do it where you already mixed it before. Just like to, you know. So I, I have to try it out on my canvas. I'm gonna see how this looks, but this is gonna be for the trees that are really far in the distance. So. It's gonna be um, shorter lines and we're gonna start about halfway on our canvas and we're just gonna create these lines going up. So these ones don't need to go that high. And I'm just gonna scatter these lines around. So some are gonna start lower down, some are gonna start higher, but you want them to be pretty far up in your green space because they're really far away. So I'm just creating these lines and I'm definitely not worrying about making them straight because these are trees and they're all kind of leaning in different directions, um, all going all over the place. So you're creating this forest of trees. And sometimes I like to use a little bit of water for my brush, um, just so it's easier to kind of stretch out the paint a bit. Oh, interesting technique. Just remember that your trunks are gonna be thicker at the bottom and then they're gonna thin out at the top. So if your top is thicker already, make sure that your bottom is even thicker. And we're using a light purple color for this. Which is kind of different.
So I'm actually making these lines a bit crooked on purpose because I want my trees to go in kind of different directions. So this part is actually pretty fun because you could have fun with your lines and go in different directions and make them crooked and not worry about making straight lines just like we did before. So we kind of started out really on the harder side, but now it gets easier and easier as the painting comes together. Pretty strong. Those are super straight lines. Maybe we should have started with these, and that way you practice the crooked ones before diving into the straight ones. I but like I kind of like it the you know, <laughs> I hear you kind of get the rigid part out of the way, and then you uh, get to have but, a little, have a little yeah, fun. Yeah, now this is all about the fun. So just make sure that they're starting at different heights on your canvas. So some are gonna start lower down, some are gonna start a little bit higher up. So definitely vary them because we don't want it to look like it's growing in a straight line. And then you could add maybe a few smaller ones really in the back. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to make a few branches for these guys. So I'm just going to add just, just a few because they're far away so you can't really see it. But I'm just extending some of these lines and just make sure that you're thinning out the lines at the top. And your branches shouldn't really be uh, wider than your trunks, right? Maybe they should be on. That could be fun. That could be interesting. Are thicker than your trunk. Yeah, then we have problems, but it could be interesting. So you don't need branches for all of them, maybe just a few here and there. So then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And the other side is not gonna be identical to this one, it's gonna be just very random and spread out as well. So I'm just starting randomly on my canvas and adding more of these wavy, crooked lines for my trees and I'm making sure that my color is pretty light so that way they look like they're far away. So I wanna make sure that my lines are going behind the, the street lights. 
So you don't want your branches so you to be over the, the street lights exactly. This keeps it shaping out to be like one of those roads you would go down with a horse carriage. Maybe in a haunted movie. Who knows? <laughs> Almost looks like early morning, like 5 a.m. It could be, no? like a little dusk. But then with the streetlights beyond. Oh, no, a little 5 a.m., a little dawn action. So that's a mildew. It's still condensation. Things are waking up. Nice fall scene. The, the more you go up your canvas, the lighter your purple color is going to be for your tree. So if you want some trees all the way in the back of your forest, just make the color much lighter. So you could just keep using more and more white. And it really depends on how, I guess, thick you want your forest to be. I keep using the word thick. Is there a synonym for it that I can? So if you want there to be more trees, you could just keep going and just go crazy with these lines. Lots of trees. It's kind of hard to know when to stop. You'll feel it. So the same thing on... You'll feel it in the bones. So the same thing on this side, we could add a few branches here and there. So I'm just extending some of these lines. Okay. Is it almost time? Not yet. Oh my god, okay. I'm sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm just so excited. <laughs> so now we're going to add a few trees that are going to be closer to us. So we're going to use a slightly darker purple. So just make sure that your color is slightly darker than the color that you're currently using. So we're just gonna not use as much white. So super simple, it's pretty much the same thing that you mixed for your road and for your other trees. So I'm using the blue and the red. And maybe adding just a little bit of white to it. And I'm gonna test it out. I'm gonna see if it's actually darker. So I'm going to start my other trees lower down because they're closer and some of them are going to be overlapping, which is okay. So I'm just going to do one of my trees here. So this color is a little bit darker, but I kind of want it to be even darker than that. So I'm going to add maybe a little bit more blue and a little bit more red to it. There we go. So I'm just taking this line, it's kind of crooked. And then I could add a few more branches here. And I'm applying really light pressure to my canvas so that way my lines could be pretty thin. And 
and I don't know why, but trees are really fun to paint. That's why a lot of our paintings actually have different types of trees because they're just really fun and you could just make them all so different. They're hard to mess up. You just, because uh, nature is so imperfect. So squiggly lines, thick lines, small lines. Exactly. It all works out. So I'm going to add a few more of these darker trees. And it's okay to overlap some of them. And I'm going to add some more branches and these branches are going to be totally different from the other ones, hopefully. Looking so spooky without the foliage. Oh, yeah. Right? I was just thinking about it. It, like, it looks like such a different scene until the foliage comes out. Maybe I'll add one more tree over here. What size is your canvas again? 12 so by this 12? is a 12 by 12. And you could play around with extending some of these trees down, maybe having some of them higher up. So definitely they should all be kind of varying uh, parts of the canvas. So I'm going to add a few more on the other side. Alex, I feel like we need some music in the background. Do we? I'm getting a little quiet up in here. We're concentrating. The trees are getting serious. So don't worry about some of these branches because we're going to be covering them up with foliage. So if you're not loving your branches that much, don't worry about it because most of them are not going to be seen and you could bring some of them back later on. Yes, they will become happy trees. <laughs> Thank you. 
fair question when looking at the current scene. So I'm gonna go with an even darker color. So I'm actually gonna use black for the trees that are closest to me. All right, you guys ready? So we're just gonna use- Oh, I'm ready. Black for this. And I'm gonna start my closest trees all the way down on my canvas. So maybe like an inch or so um, at the bottom. So maybe like around here or so. So it's really okay if your trees are overlapping one another. As long as the colors are different, it's actually gonna look really cool and it's gonna give it a lot of depth. And just keep in mind that the trees that are closest to you are gonna be thicker than the ones that are in the back, usually. So I'm gonna overlap some of these other branches that I had. A lot, like a forest. It is like a forest. Is anyone doing different types of trees? Like, is anyone doing evergreens or oak Ooh. trees or give me another kind of tree? Maples or birches. Ooh. Birches would actually be cool. <laughs> I don't know what kind of trees these are. I think Alex and I need a, you know, a botany class or something. Do so we? we can identify all Is of our strains of trees. All the trees in our painting. Or all, all the flora. If you would. So I'm just adding more and more branches. I'm thinning out the lines as I'm going up the tree. And because this one is the closest, it's also going to be higher than the other tree. But don't worry about that too much because we're going to have foliage at the top here. So I'm going to maybe add one more of this dark tree right here. And it's going to be overlapping some of these other ones. So just don't be afraid to go right over your other tree lines. So Anson ready? Four. You know what for. What?
So then I'm gonna add a few more of these types of trees on the other side as well. So I'm gonna start maybe around here or so. I'm just kind of making it up as I go up this tree. I don't really know how tall it's going to be or where the branches are. Kind of winging it. Just a spur of the moment tree. Let it flow. I like it. Looks like it. it's falling a bit, but that's okay. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Is that what you just said? It is what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's hard to know when to stop. You should stop. <laughs> Did I? Yes. Okay. Yes. Sure. Yes. Can do it. I don't know if I can. I kind of want to add more into this section. Okay. So I'm going to, Alex is going to kill me, but I'm going to add a couple of more using the medium purple. So because this section looks a bit empty to me, so I could add just a few more these trees here. Maybe I'll stop. Okay. We're almost at the foliage. How are you guys doing? How is your forest looking? So I'm just gonna wash my brush and put it to the side for now. So I do want to say, guys, that you're awesome for joining us on a Tuesday night. Like, who does this on a Tuesday? I think Kate just mentioned this, which is so true. I mean... It's like Drake said, going up on, going a, up Tuesday. on a Tuesday. Exactly. So you guys are awesome. And also, um, you're here tonight instead of watching Bachelor in Paradise, which I really... Wow. Which I really wow. appreciate. Wow. 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 I can't believe oh, I really I really it. appreciate that guys. Okay, you ready, Alex? I I'm in still in shock. You, you should just go on without me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take my large brush and I am going to use red. So I'm just going to dip it in the red. And I'm just going to go up here on the right side of my canvas, just in short, quick strokes.
Exactly how I feel, Nicole. Exactly, <laughs> exactly how I feel. So I'm just dabbing my brush with the red paint and just going over all of the branches that I just created. You're just overlapping it. Some of them will be covered, which is totally okay. And you could always bring them back in a little bit later. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Alex, you know, I realized that we haven't used our raw sienna yet. I was waiting for this uh, time. What's going to happen? You, you have me an edge over here. <laughs> so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I want to be careful and not go into these street lights, into the light over here. So I'm going to be going kind of around it and just leaving the yellow alone a bit. So you don't have to use red for this. I should have mentioned that a little bit earlier maybe, but you could use any other fall color that you like. So you could use orange, you could use yellow, um, you could use raw sienna. You could also just make it green or even white if you want to create like a winter scene or spring scene, summer right, scene. But like if you're not using raw sienna, what are you even doing? then you're just kind of wasting it. Like, what are you even doing? <laughs> is the question I have. So Nelda is asking, can we paint the streetlights last? I wouldn't recommend it just because the yellow is going to be hard for it to show up on a darker color. So if you're putting white or yellow on a background color, it's better to do it when it's light. That way it it's going to be more visible. Otherwise, you might have to do like 10 layers of the paint. So we are going to go into this raw sienna. Alex, you ready? And we're just going to do the same hold technique. On, hold on. Is it raw sienna or is it like a rose? Like is it one word? You literally asked this last year when we first started using oh, the colors. This is it's two words: raw, wow. like raw, wow. like raw, like raw meat. Oh my god, this is mind blown. I literally, I literally thought, this, thought was this was one word. You literally did the same thing last year when we used it for the falling bird. Just same I'm thing. Still mind blown. This is nonsense. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So you're going to take the raw Proceed. sienna and we're going to use the same technique and you're just going to go right into this red color and you're just dabbing and just extending this color out a bit. So you could continue playing around by adding raw sienna on top of the red, and then you could add more red on top of the raw sienna. So definitely play around, add more texture to it, and just have fun with it. And you could always go back and forth with your colors. So you're never, you never need to worry about using too much red or too much raw sienna. Hey, raw, raw sienna. sienna yeah. And actually, it looks really cool when you start building up this texture a bit. And by mixing these two colors together, you actually get this kind of cool orange color as well. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Raw sienna. Do 
You learn something new every day. Until next year. So I'm going around these lights a bit because I don't want to cover up the yellow too much. But if you covered it up a little bit, it's okay because you could bring it back. It's just it might take a few layers. So then I'm going to use a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to wash my brush. And I'm going to do the same technique with the yellow color. And you could take some of this yellow right into the into the waiting for you to say it into the, into the rossiana no, no way or no. you could take it into the red as well what if people are going completely creative and different colors that's awesome that's, that's fine. no rossiana that's fine because they wouldn't put someone through this this torture. Wow. Torture. So I'm using this yellow kind of in the middle and I'm pretty much covering up most of my sky, but you could leave a little bit of it. So it's just peeking through slightly. It's amazing how like the seasons change slowly as like you add the additional details. Yeah, before it was a spooky late fall scene when all the leaves yeah, are down yeah maybe even even you know like winter with uh with barren trees but now it's like a an early fall lush uh you know colors vibrant colors so i do want to build up my texture a bit so i'm going to go back in and add a little bit more of the red so I'm basically using the same technique and I'm using pretty thick paint here. And you could take this red into some of the other colors and just have fun with it and go a little crazy. And it's really cool to see some of this texture. So when I hold it up close, you're kind of seeing this texture on the canvas. So I want to add a little bit of purple to the sides of my canvas just to make the, the foliage a little bit darker on the side so it gives it a little bit more depth. So I'm going to make or use the purple that I already have. So you just mix the red and blue together. And I could go in here with the same technique and just add a little bit of purple to the sides and it's going to give it some depth right away. Starting to look kind of cool. And then I could go in here and do the same thing on the other side. And then you could continue just building up this texture a bit. So I'm going to show you guys what you can do with your Q-tips. So this is totally optional, but it's kind of a fun step and it helps you build up the texture a bit. 
So you could take your Q-tips and hold them all together. And then we're gonna dip it into one of the colors. So I'm gonna choose the raw sienna. I'll put it here. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna apply it on my canvas a bit. In just random spots. So it's a bit hard to see, but it's really creating this really cool texture on the canvas. You could also use the other side of the Q-tips or even maybe the same side and I could dip it into the red and do the same thing. So with the red, you actually see it a lot better. And it, it's looking pretty cool. Especially when you extend it a bit into some of the other colors. Trying not to say it, Alex. I appreciate it. <laughs> So you could just go back and forth, add more red, add more yellow, add more raw sienna. Um, if you have orange, or you could actually mix orange by doing yellow and red, you could add orange to your canvas as well, which would look really cool. That was a low-key drop. I see what you did there. So definitely play around and just have fun with it. The part where it's starting to get a bit messy. So I'm gonna lay these Q-tips on to the side. So I'm gonna go back into these street lights and I'm gonna build up the yellow a bit. So you could use one of your small brushes. So I'm just gonna do the same thing that we already did before. I'm just gonna take this yellow and just continue building up the texture a bit by applying a pretty thick layer of yellow around my light bulb. So I'm building this up a bit. So it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing, but I'm making the light around these light bulbs a bit um, more textured. So if you look at it up close, you could kind of see this texture and it's looking pretty cool on the canvas. And if you want guys, you could take another color. So you could take the red um, and maybe mix it with the yellow to make orange. And you could also add some strokes of a different color around these lights. Just to vary it up a bit.
So guys, we are about to move onto the road and create some of this reflection. Ooh. You ready? I'm so ready. Okay. So we're gonna still use our small brush and I'm just gonna wash it. And we're gonna use some white. Using our small brush and we're just gonna add a white strip going all the way down the road right below your lights. So you're gonna have a light, a strip here here and then here. This one you can't really see because I made this one too low. Um, so it's probably gonna be here somewhere. So I'm just using horizontal short little strokes for this. So I'm gonna, this one you'll be able to see better. So I'm using just short horizontal strokes going all the way down and it's kind of getting a bit thinner as you go down a bit. So just short little lines going all the way down your canvas. I want to hold this up a bit. So you're just doing short little horizontal strokes going all the way down. And I'm going to do the same thing for this white bulb. So I'm going to do the white starting. So you want to start at the edge of your road. This is where the reflection is going to be seen. And the same thing here, you're kind of going down. I'm not sure if it's going to go all the way down. We'll see what happens. So again, these are just short horizontal lines and they're all kind of a bit crooked and different lengths and not neat at all. It's really good. So again, guys, these lines are underneath your lamps because that's where the reflection is gonna be. So this is looking pretty cool. So you could add um, some yellow tones in there as well. So I could wash my brush and just add a few strokes of yellow. So basically same technique. And you're just gonna add a few yellow strokes in here. Because the light is reflecting both of these colors. So I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just adding a few little horizontal yellow strokes in here. And the same thing in this little strip. So super easy and it all kind of just comes together. And who knew a few horizontal strokes could That's create key, right? this kind of reflection. And if you're daring, you could also add maybe some red to it and play around with some of the colors. Because the worst thing that could happen is you could just cover it up with the purple again. Of all the ways I thought you made the reflection, this was definitely not, not one of my... <laughs> That's so cool. So I'm also going to add a reflection for some of these trees. So I'm going to use a dark purple for this. So you could either use your existing color that you have or just mix. So I'm going to mix some red and some blue to make some of this dark purple. Maybe a little bit of white depending on how dark your blue color is. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing. So for this one, I'm gonna start where I'm seeing my trees, sort of. My trees are kind of far away, 
from the road, but maybe I'm going to start my reflection of this tree over here. Just going all the way down again. And then maybe this tree is reflecting over here. So it's going to start here. And also this one's going all the way down. I have like a, a sneaky suspicion. On? That we should be flooding the comments. <laughs> it's, uh, as we say, a suspicion or recommendation. Hashtag flood the feed. Wow. Oh, yes. Flood the feed and your entries. I am antsy. <laughs> Let's do it. Wow, Alex. Oh, yes. <laughs> so this is going to be from the trees. So if you have a few more trees closer to the green, maybe here, you could do another line going all the way down. So I'm not going to do that just because I don't have any trees here. But if you do, you could just continue adding your reflections. And you could also add um, maybe a little bit of red, a little bit of other colors into this reflection as well. So just play around and see what happens. Okay, Alex, I think it's time. Oh, oh baby. So hold on. So let me tell you guys again, for those who may have missed it. So, okay, so we are gonna do a giveaway surprise surprise oh. um so tonight we are gonna be giving away you ready for this alex oh, oh yes <laughs> so we are gonna be giving away these two lovely mugs oh, oh my god so the uh camera the paint water and not paint water cups Okay, so obviously merch. it's going to be new ones that are packaged up very nicely. So they're going to look like this. And I can't, oh, those are so and nice. I can't even find the camera, but it's going to be paint water, not paint water. So it's going to help you distinguish the different waters so that you oh, never, never, you never mess that up. Because we've done that way too many times before Listen, we got these calls. Labeling can only <laughs> help everyone involved. So, all right, guys, so let's, Alex, you ready for this? So we are going to select a random person from the comments. It's going to be a random comment picker. So now you have a couple more seconds to flood the feed with your comments without trying to spam. And Alex, when you're ready. <laughs> let's see what we let's got, see what we got. Over here. So just, okay, I do want to mention, hold on, Alex, before you say this. So I do want to mention, guys, that we're only able to ship in the United States right now. So if we have someone from abroad, um, we could give them a digital copy of one of our paintings. So we have the instructions and sample piece and a traceable that we could give them a digital copy of. Ready? Ready? Let's see what we got here. Okay. Okay. Let's see what we got. Nervous, because I usually do this part. We got, a, we got a spinning wheel, ladies and gentlemen. Do where we have Becky White Ganchi? Becky, Becky, are you Becky. on? Becky, please tell Becky, me. Becky, are you on? Are you from the U.S.? Because, because that would be fantastic if you were. Let's see. 
Congrats, Becky. Where are you from? You. Becky. She's from yes. Ohio. Becky. Was that loud? Was that loud? So, Becky, I'm going to be sending you these fun little cups that you could paint with next time. Brand new ones, not these. Super excited. Congrats. Well done. Woohoo. Awesome. So, Becky, we'll be following up with you for your shipping address after. So, look out for that. But it, so, who's ready to create an umbrella? Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. So, we are going to take our small brush. I'm just going to wash it. And we are going to use red. So guys, I do want to mention that if you want your people to look like they're far away in the distance, your umbrella would be pretty small. So mine is going to be about an inch wide or so, and it's going to be further up your canvas. So I'm going to start all the way up my road, probably around here somewhere. And it's going to be just around curve. You could always start small and just add more paint to it and make it bigger if you want, but it's going to be harder to do the opposite way. So we're doing just a round curve and then just a squiggly line on the bottom. So this is going to be my umbrella and I'm just going to color it in. So if your umbrella is overlapping one of the trees or lampposts or anything like that, you might need to do a couple of layers. If the paint is so wet? No, the paint, or... the paint is dry, but it's going to take maybe a couple layers to just cover up that post. Because it's darker? Yeah, just because it's two colors overlapping each other and it just takes a few layers. Interesting. I did not know that. Also, guys, please feel free to use any other color for your umbrella. So it doesn't need to be red. Yellow could be fun. Oh, yellow. Blue. Yellow could Blue. be fun. Blue. A Blue might not one. stand out as much. Ooh, pink. I love it. Also, a white, you could white. do a white or a black umbrella. Or you could also do like a crazy polka dot one. Right, what about one of those uh, shell clear plastic ones? That would be hard. <laughs> that would be a little tough. <laughs> oh, Becky, good question. We do not. So Alex we likes... We get to hear. Alex likes to just be um, a mystery behind the scenes. So maybe one day... If you visit the website... She I have snuck in a few pictures of Alex on, on the Instagram. She doesn't always follow my rules, but it's okay. We love her anyway. I could also just turn the camera around, but I won't do that. <laughs> so I'm just going to add a small highlight on the left side of the umbrella. So I'm just adding a little bit of white and just going right in here. So let's see what happens. So this is just wet on wet paint. So it's just going to blend in and create a pink color. This is looking kind of cool, but I want to add a little bit more red to it. I think I added a bit too much, red, too much white. So I could just go back in here and just cover some of it up. So it's just a little bit of a highlight. I'm going to just hold it up close for you guys. So if you added too much white, you could always just go back in with the red to cover it up. So 
So then we are going to do the figures. So feel free to change up your figures and make it. Um, it doesn't need to be a male and female. It could be, you know, mother and child. It could be a family. It could be two friends. So whatever you want it to be. Um, so we are going to use black for this. Can it be a solo act? It can be. So it could nice. be just nice, one person know. as well. Or it could be someone with a dog. Who doesn't like a nice little peaceful walk through the rain With a dog? Well, the dog might feel a little upset. <laughs> they, they might not be thrilled to be out there. Okay, so I'm going to use black for this. So we are going to just suggest these two figures. So it's not going to be detailed at all. It's just going to be basic shapes. So I'm just going to start off. So my shapes are going to be about maybe an inch and a half or so in height. So it's just going to be a little bit longer than the umbrella. And that way it's going to look pretty balanced. So I'm just going to create the top part of this figure. It's going to be kind of like a rectangle. Kind of just a, re a long rectangle, and then I'm just going to do two little lines for the legs. And it's super, it's not detailed at all. So it's just suggestive. So from far away, it looks like a figure. It kind of looks like someone wearing a long coat. And then the same thing on the other side. And you want them to not be exactly the same. So maybe this one is facing the other person and maybe he's wearing a dress. So I just want to hold it up for you guys because it's literally, it's like a rectangle and then two little lines for legs. So for this one, she could actually have her legs kind of overlapping each other. So it's going to be more of just one line. You got this guys. We are almost there. So now I'm going to create a shadow underneath them. So it's kind of going to be a reflection. So I'm going to use pretty much the same purple color that I used for these. And I'm just going to create some of these lines for the reflection. Maybe I'll add just a little bit of white to my color. See what happens. So I'm just adding a little bit of a squiggly line underneath this figure. So it could even be a little bit darker at the top, closer to your people's legs, and then it could be a little bit lighter. But it's basically, it's just a few horizontal lines, just a squiggle underneath them, and that's all you need. And again, guys, if you don't like your reflection, you could always paint over with the regular purple color that you use for the road. So just cover it up and you could play around and try it again.
So Alex, we're not done yet. We have a couple of steps. No, not yet. (laughs) So we are going to use our small brush uh, for some of these falling leaves. So this is a bonus step. I actually don't think that this is in the instructions, but this is a bonus step for you guys. So I am going to take this brush and just dip it into one of my three colors. And then I'm just going to create these small little dots. And some of them are not even dots, but kind of this short little stroke. So it doesn't need to be a dot, but you could kind of extend it out a bit if you want to. So it looks almost like a falling leaf. And then you could overlap some of these on the trees because they're falling all over the place. And then also on the ground and onto the road. That looks pretty cool. I'll give you that. You also want them going in different directions. So some of your lines could be going to the left. Some would be going to the right a bit because they're just falling all over the place. And just make sure that they're very random. And also just overlapping some of these trees and maybe overlapping some of these posts. And maybe there's going to be more at the bottom. So definitely feel free to add a lot more of these dots on the bottom so it looks like you have a pile of leaves if you want to. So I'm going to add a few more colors. I'm going to do some raw sienna. Wow. Wow. And then some yellow as well. So I'm also going to add some yellow leaves. Do you think someone was shaking trees as they were walking by? To create the nice effect. Come again? The lovely pair in your painting. Looks like someone gave the trees a little shake you know give it a nice effect for the scene looks wonderful i don't want to be there right now uh, that's what i'm saying maybe not in the rain i'll give but you maybe that. that's, that's a good point i would not like to be in the rain you could add more of these leaves on the side of your road as well So I think that was almost the last step because the last step is to sign your art piece. There you go. You got to sign your art piece. You got to sign your art piece so we could sign it at the bottom right corner, at the top, wherever you like it. Um, Your signature is part of this art piece, so definitely make it nice. Right? I agree. So thank you guys so much for joining. Don't forget to please share what you created on tag Instagram us. or Facebook and tag us. Also visit our website, see what other paintings we have. 
and leave us a review on our Facebook page if you had an awesome time tonight. Right. So thank you so much for joining and see you next time. Yay. Bye.